Another pattern in the organizing data series that's very similar to replace type code with subclasses is called replace type code with state or strategy. The motivation here is that you have a type code which affects the behavior of a class, but you can't use subclassing. For example, here our type code is mutable, so throughout the life of the object it can change. So if we were to use subclassing, we would have to change the class itself during the life of the object, which, if it's even possible, would be hacky and unintuitive. We'd want something a little more elegant than that. So what we're going to do here is instead of subclassing the employee, we'll create a employee type class and subclass that. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll make it abstract. And for the moment, it really only needs one thing on it, which is the type code itself. And now we can create our implementations of it. Now that we have our strongly typed employee type objects, we're going to want to replace this with something that's backed by an employee type. Although publicly it could still just be the integer, but the backing field will need to be the employee type. In order to do that, this setter would end up having a switch statement in it. So rather than putting another switch statement on this employee object, let's put that switch statement here in a factory method. We'll just call it, should return an employee type. We'll just call it create. And it needs an integer of the type code. I know it means we have a second switch statement on the same, the same values, which is a little unsightly for now, but remember we're just taking this in small discrete steps. And so far there have been non-breaking steps because we haven't actually modified the employee type yet, although we could compile and run our tests just as a sanity check. But now let's go ahead and modify that employee type. We'll first give it the backing field. call it employee type. And then we just need to modify the getter and setter for this auto implemented property here. So now this would be an opportune time to rerun our tests. But at this point, we haven't externally changed the visible behavior of this at all. And while we have replaced this backing type code with our strongly typed object here, we haven't really made use of that yet. We haven't done anything with it. 
So let's start moving some of the employee type functionality out of employee and into employee type. We'll start with the obvious example, which is these types themselves. These constants probably belong in here. Of course, this would also be a breaking change that anywhere in our code that these constants are used, we would have to point them to the new location. Another opportune time to rerun all of our tests, recompile the whole thing to make sure that we didn't miss any uses of those constants anywhere else in the code. And so now those numbers are still a little more encapsulated here, but they're not completely encapsulated yet. We still have these integers that are coming through. So we'd want to do another breaking change here. We want to change this employee type or this, this visible type parameter here to actually be employee type. So that breaking change just turns this into a simple auto-implemented property. Oops. Kind of messed that one up. There we go. And so now this switches on the type itself. And then everything else is fine except for here, where we now want to accept an employee type. So that was a, another significant breaking change, which could be moved into probably smaller discrete steps, but I think it's easy enough to do that we could do all that one in, in one big step. And now finally, we still have this one last outlier here. And this was actually the primary reason why we wanted to move this into another object, was because this is where that type affects the behavior of the object. And so this is an opportune time to use another pattern we haven't covered yet, which is called replace conditional with polymorphism. And in that case, this get pay amount since it relies entirely on the employee type, would actually move to the employee type itself. So first we'll create our abstract method for it. I believe it returns an integer. Yes. And in this case we need to pass it an employee object. And now we can implement it in our subclasses. So now we can get rid of this switch statement entirely and return type dot get pay amount of this. And so now this get pay amount on the employee object is just a pass through to the employee type, which is just an abstract method that its subclasses use polymorphism to determine which employee type it is rather than using a switch statement. And so while technically we're done, the pattern is over, one final thing we might do is throughout the code determine whether it makes sense to keep this pass-through on the employee or to just have other places in the code go directly to employee type. 
because in order to call this an employee, they have to have an instance of that employee, so they can pass that instance directly into the employee type method call as well. Of course, they would have to have that instance of employee type, which they have on the employee. So it really just is a matter of personal taste at that point throughout the rest of the code, see what's easier to support and what isn't. In this case, I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't have a rest of the code. But that's pretty much it for the pattern. That's replace type code with state or strategy. Thanks for watching.